Hello and welcome to our coffee series. Today we want to talk about the brand new Quarkus Langchain extension. It's uh, offered in the Quarkiverse and it allows you to connect your Quarkus service with large language models like uh, OpenAI's ChatGPT or models from Hugging Face. Um, with Langchain, you can integrate not just the language models themselves, but also offer uh, advanced services like uh, building agents that can access tools, so functions of your Quarkus service, but also stuff like uh, retrieval augmented generation, where we use um, a vector database to find relevant documents uh, for a query and provide them to the language model so it can use the documents that are relevant for your query and have proper context for the answers. But also retrieval augmented generation. Retrieval augmented generation is used to provide relevant documents um, to the large language model so it can provide a proper answer based on actual resources instead of hallucinations. I've already opened the Langchain 4 j uh, Quarkus extension documentation. And here we can also see this image, which illustrates what you can do. Um, here we have our Quarkus service, which can provide tools. We will see this later. Um, tools are functions that the large language model can later call. Um, but we can also integrate document stores or vector databases for the retrieval augmented generation. To get started, as always, we just need to add the extension. Since this is a Quarkiverse extension, it has a separate versioning, so we also need to add the version. Um, and depending on if you want to use OpenAPI's um, ChatGPT models or Hacking Face models, uh, you need to uh, select the proper uh, extension to import. Then we also need an API key for OpenAPI. You can easily generate one uh, from your account. Um, please be aware, um, using the larger models can incur some costs. Okay, let's dive right in. To get started, I already prepared the example project generated with code.quarkus.io. Now, let's get started. Um, I have already added the dependency here. I'm using uh, Cradle with Kotlin DSL. To get started, we first need to define an interface. Here we define the interface um, simple poem AI service. You can call it whatever you like. What is important is that we annotate this interface with add register AI service. This is similar to how you would register a REST client. And that's also what's done behind all of this. Um, so we register AI service and now we just need to define a function, what we want to do. So in our, for our example, we want to write a poem. Um, so let's write a poem about a specific topic and uh, of a specific length. So a couple of lines. And of course, we don't want to do it ourselves. We want the language model to do this for us. So to allow this, we need to define two more annotations. This is first the system message and also the user message. So in general, the system message is there to tell the language model uh, about its role, how it should behave. So in our case, um, we define your professional poet. And for the user message, we want to tell the model what it should do with the user input. So we can here, we can template a string here. So let's say, uh, write a poem about topic. The poem should be lines, uh, lines long. So what we do here is basically we uh, use the user's input later, which is the topic, and the number of lines we want 
we put them into a query and that's basically the same as if you would send this to your chat GPT, just that we will do it um, with the API. So this is already all we need to do on the coding part to integrate with a large language model. One thing that's left to do is to define our API key. So to do this, I already prepared a .env file. Here's an example how it looks like. So you have your open API key and you can configure it there or also just as an environment variable or directly write it into your application properties. But that's not, of course not recommended because you don't want to put this in your version control. So in my case, I just referenced the environment variable here to set it as the open API uh, open AI API key. Now we have configured everything we need for our home service. Um, however, we still need to somehow interact with it. And for that, we will define just a simple poem resource. For this, I already prepared this poem resource. Under slash poem, we have a simple get endpoint with two rest query parameters. Uh, one is the topic and one is lines and lines also has a default value. And in here, we simply call the poem AI services method poem or write poem. And we just injected that here. So now let's run this. Okay, our service has started up. So let's have a look in Postman. I already prepared the request here. Um, we call our simple poem endpoint. The topic is uh, developers love quarkers and we want a uh, poem with eight lines. So let's send this. And voila, we already get the results from JetGPT's API. So we got a nice poem here. Now let's also have a look what happened in the background. Hmm. At first we see nothing because Quarkus by default does not lock the requests to the API. But we can enable the logging by just adding two properties to the application properties config. So for the open API, we can lock the requests and we can also lock the responses. So let's try this again. Write another poem. In the background, Quarkus has now recompiled and executed the request again. We get a different poem this time. And we get a lot of rocks here. So now we can have a look. Here first we have the, the request. It was a post call to the OpenAI API. We also see that there was the um, the API key passed along with the user agent and so on. And the important part is here the body. And we can have a look at this in a better view. So what we see here, I by default, the used model is GPT 3.5 Turbo. Um, we see our system message, you're a professional poet. And we see the user message, write a poem about developers love quarkers. And the poem should be eight lines long. So then we can also have a look at the response. The response is a bit formatted a bit better. We get here the body from ChatGPT. Uh, it tells us some idea of the request. Um, it was created with this model. And then here we get a response from the role as the assistant. And the assistant tells us the um, the poem and that's also what we got back from our simple AI services right poem method. So if you want to switch the model and use a different model from from open API you can also do this by just setting another property in the application properties. So in this case we can set the chat model model name property and you can look up which models open AI currently offers on their website. Um, for now, let's use the GPT-4 model. Uh, this is actually GPT-4 Turbo. And when we run the next request, um, we will now use that model. 
So now we got a new poem, but in this case, if we have a look at the request again, this time we use the GPT-4 model. For writing a simple poem, the effect is not too big, but we will see in later videos that for more advanced tasks, GPT-4 is much better. Now I've told you before, you can also use Hacking Face to integrate with these models and Hacking Face also offers a some public inference APIs, but you can also deploy the models for yourself on your own hardware or with AWS. So in that case, we need to switch the extension and use the Hugging Face extension. Uh, you just replace the OpenAI here with Hugging Face. And then of course, we also need to change the properties here to reflect Hugging Face. We can for now just comment them out we can use the hacking face API key and we can do the same to enable the logging. For this, we just need to also exchange hacking face or open AI with hacking face here. And now when we uh, this time really restart the project because we changed the dependency, then we can use hacking face for writing our poems. So again, our service has started up and let's fire our request. So one difference we directly notice is um, that the hacking face model doesn't seem to care too much about our ask to write only eight lines of poem. And it did also output our prompt here, which is usually not something we want. Um, but this is just something uh, that you need to keep in mind whenever you switch to a different large language model you need to make sure that your prompts are still working with this model and are adapted to this model. And there's for sure ways to tell the hacking face model also exactly what we want. Um, but most likely we will need to tell it in a bit of a different way. That's it already for our first video about how you can use Quarkus with LangChain to integrate with large language models like OpenAI's ChatGPT or hacking face models. In the next videos, we will have a close look at tools and how you can use them to build agents with your AI and also at uh, retrieval augmented generation uh, where we feed proper context to the model so it can provide you better answers. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss the next videos and see you next time. Bye-bye.